these are the questions that we will be doing in question one. So if you maybe want to pause the video now and go try each of these questions, then go ahead. So in question 1.1.1, we have to solve for x. So we know that if we have two brackets like x minus 2, x minus 4, and they make that equal to 0, then all that we say is that x minus 2 is equal to 0 or x minus 4 is equal to 0. So in the same way, we can say here that 2x minus 4 is equal to 0 or 3x minus 27 is equal to 0. Then we can solve by saying 2x equals to 4 and if you divide by 2, x would be equal to 2. Then for this one, you can say 3x is equal to 27. We know that 27 is the same as 3 to the power of 3. So we can do that. Then what happens is that these 3's are the same and so you can cancel them out and so x is equal to 3. In 1.1.2 we are told to use two decimal places. Guys, did you know that that automatically means that this cannot be factorized? It means that you have to use the quadratic formula. And so what we first need to do is move the 5 over to the left so that we make everything equal to 0. Then we use the quadratic formula a will be equal to 3, b will be equal to minus 4, and c would be equal to negative 5. And so we'll get x equals to minus, then b is a negative, so I put it in brackets like that, plus or minus, then b must go in brackets, a is 3, and then c is negative 5. See how I use the brackets, and then it's 2 times a, which is 3. Then you would go ahead, type this in on the calculator, I'm going to use a minus first, well, I mean a plus first, you know what I'm talking about, when you choose a plus or a minus, I'm going to do a plus first. And then after that I'll get a, choose a negative, and so the two answers that we get would be 2.12 or negative 0 0.79. For 1.1.3 I feel that it was a bit unnecessary for them to give you that little hint over there, um, but nonetheless they did. So what I want you to identify is whenever you get situations like this, for example, I'm just going to make up a few examples, it looks like a trinomial, right? Now I'll, I'll show you how to see if it is a trinomial, let's quickly try another one. Um, let's say we have 4 minus 3x2 minus 4 equals to 0. So did you know that a trinomial is a trinomial whenever this number is double this number? So 2 thirds is double 1 third, so that's a trinomial. 4 is double 2, so that's a trinomial. And then the trinomials that we've always done since like grade 9, I'll prove to you that that's also a trinomial because this is a 2 and this is a 1. So whenever it's double, then it's a trinomial. So what we do here is we bring the um, 6 over to the other side. So what I want to quickly do is show you a little trick. You should always take the smallest one, which is the 1 over 3, and we're going to rewrite this one using that. So we're going to say that this is x to the third squared. Because those two, if you multiplied them, you're still going to get 2 over 3. And then we can say minus x to the third minus 6 equals to 0. Then we can use their little suggestion, which is to let x a third equal to k. So let x a third equal to k and so then we get k squared minus k minus 6 and now that is an easy trinomial which will just be k minus 3 and k plus 2 and so therefore k would be equal to 3 or k would be equal to negative 2 but now that's not the answer that's the answer for k but we want the answer for x so then what we do is we come back to this and so we need to use each of these now. So what we can do is we can say, if k equals to 3, then what we can say is that we can replace the k with x to the third. So we can say x to the third equals to 3. And then for the other one, it's going to say, if k equals to minus 2, then we can say x to the third equals to negative 2. And now to get to solve these types of equations, you take the reciprocal on both sides. And what we'll find is that x is equal to, um, because this, this just becomes a 1. So that's nice. That cancels out. And then 3 to the power of 3 is 27. And then here for this one, we also just take the reciprocal of a third, which is 3. 
Why do I do that? Because 1 over 3 multiplied by 3 over 1 just cancels out, and so you just get 1. That's why we do it. See, it's 3 over 1 and 3 over 1. And so what we end up with now is x equals 2, and then if you go type this in the calculator, you're going to get negative 8. With this question, I wouldn't pay too much attention to the determine the sum of the integers. What I would do is just solve the inequality. So the way we solve an inequality is, I'm just going to write this down again. Okay, now what I want you to do is pretend that this is an equal sign, and then just solve it the way you normally would. So if it was an equal sign, you would have, you'd factorize this as x minus 3, oh no, this will be x plus 3, x minus 2, and your two answers, which I'm going to call them critical values, your teacher might not do that, but the two answers, if this was an equal sign, would be x equals to negative 3 and x equals to 2. So what you then do is you draw yourself a little number line, or just a line like that, and you put those critical numbers, which are almost like the answers. And then what you do is you come back to here and you ask yourself, that is a parabola. So then you ask yourself, is it a happy or a sad parabola? So is it going like this or is it going like this? Well, it's a happy parabola, um, the one that's smiling, because this number in the front is a positive number, not a negative number. So we draw our little happy face going through those two. Whoops. Something like that. And then we look at the question. It says, where is this parabola smaller than or equal to zero? When they say smaller than, they mean underneath. And so the answer is inside here, because that is where the graph is underneath. Can you see it? If you've seen my other videos with above the ocean and below the ocean, if this was the ocean, like the, the ocean, like the beach, then where is where are we underwater? We are underwater here. Now, when you give your answer, you're going to use the x values because it says, um, oh no, we always give our x values in the answer. Sorry, they didn't say anything there. So you're going to go from minus 3 up to 2. So therefore, you're going to say x is bigger than minus 3, but also equal to because they've said equal to, but then smaller than or equal to 2. If you are someone who prefers to use interval notation, you would say x is an element going from minus 3 up to 2. Now they say, determine the sum of the integers of the answers, so or the solution. So the solution is from minus 3 up to 2. So think about that. What are all the integers between minus 3 and 2? Well, there's minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. Those are integers. And they said, determine the sum. So we literally just add them together. So if you had to go add minus 3 plus minus 2 plus minus 1 plus 1 plus 2, your answer would equal to negative 3 if you had to go add them all up. And so that is the answer for this question.